I did something wild and crazy today. Um, I installed the Kodsu Black on the uh, Riga Planar 8. So today I'm going to talk about uh, my sonic impressions on this combination. Um, if And I've added chapters this time, so please, if you um, want to go straight to the sound quality part of it, just hover above the timeline and you should be able to see uh, the sections and you can just click on that and you should be able to go straight to the sound quality part. And I also talk about the end about my impressions on the uh, Kuetsu versus the Afida 2 on the Riga Planar 8. Uh, but now let's just talk about some, uh, some specifics about the cartridge and tonom combination here. The Kuetsu Black is a medium compliance uh, cartridge. By compliance, I mean the springiness of the cantilever and how it behaves. You have low, medium, and high. Low compliance usually means stiff, and high compliance means the, uh, the cantilever is a little more springy. That's the characteristic of certain cartridges, and they're specified as such. The specs of this particular uh, cartridge go it's black is um, is medium and this tone arm the RB880 is at the high end of low mass turntables in fact uh, tone arm is considered a low mass if it's 10 grams or under this is specified as effective mass of at 11 grams so that's just when the medium effective mass range starts. So um, I've tried this out on the uh, Rega Planar 3 on the RB330 and it took and it played fine. So I was uh, really excited uh, to mount this on here. Um, so it, I'm sure uh, most of you uh, know about the Kuetsu, uh, but for those who are just new to this hobby, uh, Kuetsu wowed the American and British hi-fi scene in the late 80s to the beginning 90s uh, with their sonic, with their signature. Their, their sound signature is warmth and detail and they strike this balance and uh, it's, it's on all their, uh, that's what they tout on all their cartridges. Um, they also claim uh, the use of precious metals and, ex and handmade. This cartridge new is 3K. Well, that's considerably higher than the Afida. The Afida 2 uh, is at uh, 18 or 1900. So the Afida is just about 60% of the price of this uh, Koetsu uh, black gold line. Um, but uh, but I wanted to see how, how it all comes together. So let's go on to the uh, sound quality part of it. Um, I'm going to talk through, uh, I'm going to try and keep the vinyl as, as much as the same as I can as I did with the other uh, reviews about the uh, Riga P8 and the cartridges. Uh, so let's start with Santana 3, mobile fidelity pressing. I've heard this several times, uh, side A track number three, I think, and the track's name is Taboo. Uh, I've heard this so many times, like I said, and it's a it's a nice, warm, mellow sounding blues track that slowly picks up in place, in pace, um, and then you hear Santana's guitar wailing away. Um, the thing that stood out about the uh, gold, uh, the black gold line is the bass lines and that's the signature of a Koetsu. The bass is full, it has a bloom to it, it has a bloom to it, uh, yet there is uh, delineation, there is uh, detail in the thing that the bass has this growl, there's actual growl to the, to the uh, bass guitar pieces of it and I was like wow. I've heard this so many times, how, how have I not um, noticed this? And this just makes, makes that growl uh, a little, uh, there is a richness in that growl. It's hard to describe. There is, there is a certain uh, distortion in that bass guitar. 
that that comes forward as a growl, it's pretty clear in the Afida. This one adds some texture to that uh, to that sound. It's uh, it was very pleasing and very nice. And Santana's singing um, it has also this uh, magic in the voices. That magic is beautiful. And I'm about to uh, talk to you about the second LP. Uh, this is the Eagles. Hell freezes over. Uh, Side 2 has uh, live music, uh, actually um, Side 2, 3 and 4 are all live, recorded live and Side 1 has their uh, first 4 new songs, uh, new back in 1995 I think. Uh, my favorite tracks are I Can't Tell You Why and um, New York Minute. Uh, again, the standout feature I expected this characteristic because I have um, used, I have played the uh, Coetzee Black on the Riga Planar 3. Uh, it showed very similar, I knew what to expect, I should say. Uh, yet it took me by surprise, a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, bass lines, again, it just pins you to your listening chair um, and it just shakes the room the way. Um, I can't tell you why it starts. That's how it starts with uh, nice bass lines. Um, and uh, Don Henley's voice, of course, is beautiful, balanced between uh, softness and raspiness in his voice. Um, second track is, I think, my most favorite track. It's called uh, The New York Minute. Uh, keyboards and the bass line starts. Having got up, dressed on in black, and, and the lyrics go on like that. It's a very ominous, uh, sad, melancholic song. Uh, and uh, again, the, the bass lines here, you can tell the story that's coming from the song is, uh, is sad. It's gloomy, despondent. Yeah, that's how it sounds, and you've, I've heard this track also many times. And there's a uh, spot in the song where he goes, um, take a fool's advice, uh, hang on to your own, because one day they're here, next day they're gone. And when he says the word gone, there is an inflection and almost a quiver in his voice that you pick up on. And then right after that, bass lines again, they come nailing you to that listening chair and this wave of emotions come forth from the song. My point is this cartridge is bringing out uh, bringing out those nuances so well in his vocal inflections uh, that the emotion, that, that, that the whole experience is emotive. It just really connects you to the music. Okay, so enough of that. Um, one more here is Colvin Hawkins in the Oscar Peterson Trio. Uh, this is an analog pressing um, 45 RPM double album. First song here uh, inside one is Maria. Um, Oscar Peterson's piano rings out at the beginning of the song with beautiful overtones. Again, Koetsu mid-range magic is shining here. And then the bass drum hits and the bass uh, engages you the, uh, the, and it seems to make the room shudder. Okay, so this, is, this is a recording from uh, way back when, 1958. And it's recorded so well. And this reissue uh, in 2012 by Analog Productions uh, is fantastic. I think they're still available out there. Um, the uh, mid-range when Ben Webster and the Hawk uh, layer their saxophones on and off. It is beautiful. There is this rich glow around the mid-range. Uh, I, I think there is a smidge lack of detail here where that little glow and bloom overtakes and there are some other nuances lost, but that is the intent of that cartridge. Uh, when they made the uh, Koetsu line of cartridges, I think 
that was what they wanted the cartridge to sound like. Uh, fantastic experience. And uh, one more, uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears, One Step Pressing MoFi. Again, uh, the track's uh, Blues Part 2. The organ begins and there are tones of the organ that are just so beautiful. They sound so beautiful. Uh, again, the word that comes to mind is uh, rich glow and, and hue around the tones that are coming out uh, in the uh, lower, lower mid-range, mid-range and upper mid-range. Um, and the bass lines also pick up uh, in the song. It is both, both plump, juicy, and detailed. That's that fine. So over the price of the P8, it's about thirteen hundred. Um, the Coet so again is a three K. There's a large disparity in price, and uh, it's again the point is whatever you put on the stone arm will shine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, crazy review. Uh, I'm still uh, I'm still at a loss for words of how much I love that Koetsu Black, uh, but the Afita is such a nice package with the Riga Planar 8. Thank you for watching. More to come. Please subscribe.